Hi, everybody. I'm Mel Dore, the Aloha, the Aloha, the Aloha shirt psychic, coming to you from the suburbs of Chicago where the air is electric. Yes. And I am so, so, so honored and happy to have the following two guests. We've got mm -hmm. Lena Rodriguez, direct from Down Under. Hi, Lena. Hi, hi. How cool. Beaming and out of Chicago. <laughs> there you go. And I've got Deanne, uh, uh, Deanne's maiden shield Tarot. Yeah, uh, she'll made in Tarot. I have to make a long name. I should have made it shorter. <laughs> yeah, it does. That's wonderful. And Lena, if they want to get a hold of you for a session, and Lena's a wonderful reader. And uh, teacher. How do they do so, Lena? Well, email me, and that is lena.rodriguez, with a Z, dot tarot at gmail.com. So it's a bit of a mouthful, and I'll be reading again at the, the end of September. So that's Lena dot Rodriguez R O D R I G U E Z dot Tarot at gmail dot com. C'est moi. <laughs> and Deanne, how do they get a hold of you? A uh, couple different ways. They can go to my website, which is manifestshop dot net. And I, I sell my manifest uh, manifesting oils there. And then they can also book a reading there or they can call the uh, business phone number or text me at 1-833-277-8105. All right. And um, what is the name of your oils, Manifest? Uh, man, it's Manifest Shop USA is the name of the company, that the little business, small businesses I have. And it's uh, manifestshop.net. If they go to that, it'll bring them to the site. And I've got all kinds of new products and stuff for the two. For them Who's to see. sponsoring tonight's show? So hey. they really work. I want to tell you, they really work. Um, they do. You wouldn't believe I, all the comments I'm getting that that have had people have had success with them. Fantastic I'm, letters fantastic. people have been writing me about how great they are really makes me feel good. Mm. I use them for the thing here in Chicago that we've got mm -hmm. coming up at the end of September. We are now sold out. We have a we're taking waiting list, and I use it for a couple of my trips, and they're full. And so th they work. I'm telling you, they work. So. They do. <laughs> all right. You're magical. Okay, so here we are. Yay. Yeah. Um, so let's, shall we do it this way? Let's take a look at the outcome of the election. I know everybody's talked about it. Everybody's like made their predictions. But my warning, my guides tell me, is the Dems do not have this in the bag. We need to be very, very, very careful. Because mm -hmm. if we slack, we could easily lose. So we mm -hmm. have to, be able to vote. So what do you all think the outcome of the election will be? And do you think when, if, <laughs> or when the Dems yeah. win, is Trump going to pull any shenanigans like he did before? So we'll start with you, Lena. Go ahead. Well, exactly. Be prepared. Be on a war footing. Because... The GOP is so desperate, they will do anything. And we know that. We know their pattern. I just hope behind the scenes, Kamala and various heavyweight legals are getting in touch with every attorney general of every state to say, and I think this is a smart way to do it, we've all been through this four years from the last election result, the can country cannot do it again. So we uh, want to see a written plan from every AG how they are preserving the integrity of the election in their state. Yay. Can we put the pressure back on them. Lena, I have to give you credit about one thing. When I did a show on, on Deanne's channel and somebody asked about, you know, the immunity SCOTUS thing, I'll never oh. forget what you said. Oh. And you said that um, the Supreme Court would kick it back down. I think you said to the states, but then you said to a lower court for mm -hmm. them to decide. 
Mm -hmm. You were really right on about that because they that stupid rule that they made, it was like, made the, I mean, it kind of made the Constitution unconstitutional, if that makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, it's actually frozen the legal system at that level. Right. For Jack Smith, for Tanya Chutkin, for all these cases, because it is such a deliberately flawed ruling. It is. Um, so, Deanne, let's ask you about the outcome of the election and what you think. Then we'll talk about the SCOTUS ruling and what you all pick up on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I watched the I watched the DNC last night and it brought me to tears watching mm -hmm. Michelle and watching Obama. In fact, I re-listened to it today. And what yeah. she said is we don't have it in the bag. Everybody has to work. Everybody, you know, has to, you know, they we see all this love and happiness, but I he this means jail to him. He is going to cheat by hook yep. or by hook, try to get in there. And he has put people into uh, positions to where they don't want to certify the vote. I think there may be some people arrested. I think it's going to be delayed. He's going to try to delay. She'll win, yep. Yep. I believe. Yep. But he's going to delay it as much as he can by making him recount the vote, recount the mm -hmm. vote. I, and he's going to so uh, hate and try to get people to think it was stolen again because they convinced them before so i think that she is going to win if we all vote if everybody gets out there and does what michelle obama and and you know barack said but mm. yeah there's going to be there's going to be some cheating there's going to be and also the mail i think DeJoy still works there doesn't he yeah because i've been sending oils to people lately and they've been usually they get there like that and, and they've been taking longer, which makes me wonder if they're going to try to slow the mail down, too, oh, to try to keep it. Totally. Mm -hmm. And you've got to assume they're going to do this in your county and your district and your state regardless, you know. They're yes. going to pull up mailboxes. They're going to lose boxes of mail. You know, they're going to use every trick in the book and anecdotal stories people are checking their own registration they've had for decades and their dec their registration has been tampered with yeah. and that's my advice everybody check your registration yes um that's why i don't do like uh i don't want to say write in but that's why i don't vote by mail i mm -hmm. go on election day i go mm -hmm. to the machine I watch mm -hmm. them print it out. I watch them put it in the, you know, the little yes. counter thingy. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it's inconvenient, but I would suggest everybody, please vote, but check your registration. If you have to, go to your voting center. And I do think you're right, Deanne and Lena, that DeJoy is going to try to slow down the mail, but he's going to get caught doing it. Yes. And, and, yeah, but... There isn't time in the universe to have this man who's proven his bad behavior. Right. Why is he still there? Well, I think you know, I understand the postal service is a board, but don't you pull the board aside one by one in a car park, you know, six months ago and say, no, we've got to get rid of this man. They I can't tried. believe he's there. They tried, but I do think they have somebody there now that will, you have to have a majority, I forget how it works, but that will, that will get rid of DeJoy and he is soon to be gone very, very soon. And I see him under investigation at some point and I see indictments coming out against him. And I, I think the other exciting thing is the others, mm -hmm. the fake electors and stuff, their legal cases are only happening now. And although we're all frustrated it's taken four years, people have a short memory. I think it's quite important that these cases are happening in front of our eyes now. So if I'm a magophile and I think I'm going to save Donald and I'm going to do it, maybe I'll think twice when I see people doing my job, <laughs> getting jail sentences. That's a great point. I'm glad they're doing it now. There's, I think there's yeah. a method to the madness for waiting so long and people were complaining about it but it actually works out in my psychic opinion for the dems or for justice if you will 
I, I'm going to vote as early as possible. And if you get mail in, I think just to put it up, you know, if you have to do mail in, I think get it out there as early as possible to give it time. But mm. my question to you guys is, is maybe, you know, the, the, the Supreme Court made some, remember they made that ruling that, uh, you know, that a president was immune from prosecution when doing, couldn't Biden just get rid of him now since he's the president and they have made him kind of king? Biden won't he's do He's not going to, though. He could, Biden's though. Not, but he... Biden's not going to do anything to give the other party any, or to give Donald Trump any, uh, any room to point fingers of blame. He's going to play it by the book. Yeah. yeah. That ruling of the Supreme Court made it about as clear as mud what's immune and what isn't. Well, if it's personal, it's not, if it's presidential, it's not immune, but if it's, per, it's immune, but if it's personal, it isn't. And, you know, you got to sift through all And it's it. deliberately obstructive as a law. It's not meant to clear up anything. It's not. But I see that changed. I yeah. Yes. But they're going to have to impeach. They're going to have to impeach and get rid of judges. Yes. yes. I think but that's on the other mind. side. The other thing I'd advise people to do is, is there a relative or a neighbour who might be doing mail-in who you can take on the day to the polling booth instead, you know, and stay with them all day and so forth. If you can help someone else physically vote, do it. You know. That's what yeah. I was thinking of doing, like getting people to carpool to get people to the yeah. polls. Um, yes. And make it a festival. You yeah. know, get to see everyone just like I have yeah. a television party. <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome. I'm having a party. If she, when she gets elected, I'm having a party. It's my birthday too, my 60th <laughs> birthday, and we're the first woman president. What a gift will that be? You, you know, look, yeah. You're 40 DMs. Huh? You look like you're about 40. It's oh, I know, birthday. doesn't she? <laughs> Whatever you got, throw some my way, would you? Yeah, really. Um. So yeah, I see DeJoy gone as well. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, and I agree. I think that, you know, my feeling is Kamala's going to win by a landslide. Yeah. But I do think Trump's going to uh, try some shenanigans. And I still see he's going to try to mess around with the electors, with fake electors and stuff like that. He but said I, it. He said it. Oh, I don't I don't know. What did, what did he say exactly? Well, we've got 70 people in place in key states. Yep. They don't even bother being secret. Well, I see that being foiled and overturned. Mm. And he has to remember it's the vice president who certifies the votes. Now, what my psychic light bulb just went on, because Kamala is the vice president. Vice president. And when yeah. she wins, Trump's going to say, well, she she cheated because she's the vice president. <laughs> she put herself in office. And he's going to go on and on and on. on. <laughs> Guaranteed. And actually, that's a bit of a thing when you think about it. It mightn't look good. They might have to delegate it. Um, well. Oh, that's complicated. Wish I hadn't thought of that. I know. <laughs> it's like a light bulb just went on, and it kind of has shown me all along what Trump <laughs> would do. Even back when Biden won, Back in November, uh, I had said on YouTube that Trump is going to try to put in fake electors and, and to try to get them to change the electoral vote. And here we are. <laughs> so, Oh, totally. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to blame the machines. And Oh, yeah. Well, um, so I guess you all are saying that you see Kamala winning. Is that a yes? Yeah. I it's see a win the votes. popular vote, not an issue, but people have to get out. It's the shenanigans later that everyone has to be prepared for. But you know what? I think this vibe is so different is. and the momentum is so strong. When they start pulling these stunts, I don't think the American people will put up with it this time. Everyone was so paralysed and burnt out and exhausted and frustrated I thought, oh, no, no. Yeah, and you're right. I, I think that's a change in energy that we've been predicting. Yeah, yes. This energy shift. And if you don't believe yeah. in energy shifts, you're seeing it right now because yeah. Kamala and Tim Walls are not focusing on uh, anarchy. 
They're not focusing on xenophobia. They're not focusing on hate. They're not focusing on divisiveness. They're they're focusing on pulling people together. They're talking about what they're going to do for this country. Trump still hasn't what he said what he's going to do. It's just his disjointed ramblings about what a victim he is. That's and all. we think you're right. Americans are tired of it. We want this energy. This this I haven't felt this energized since Obama was running. And in fact, yeah. I have more yeah. energized. Yeah. Yeah. More. Yeah. Um, so I guess my question then would be, will this energy momentum continue until the election? I think so, yeah. I think oh, I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think it's growing in front of our eyes. And it's that's how energy works. Just as pessimism and fatalism are contagious, so is this fever. It's yeah. fantastic. Really? And all these bizarre groups for, you know, white dudes for Harris and retirees for Kamala and Walson, with Republicans for Harris. I mean, we're seeing things we haven't seen before. Yeah. And it has to happen on that scale. People have to do things they've never done before. I see an official group, I mean, a, a, an official, official group, Republicans for Harris. Uh, yeah, yeah, it that's started. Gonna, it's going to, that's going to gain momentum as well. And that would have to do in the head of the Yeti. See, part of the problem for the GOP now is that he he's actually not a political creature. We know that. He's just an oligarch. He's transactional. He doesn't, he never mentions the party. Right? There's no one in it except him. And now that's coming home to roost. Yep. Right? You know, you said a word, Lena, that I've been saying for a long time is transactional. If it doesn't have oh. some kind of value yeah. to Trump, then it's not yeah. Trump's attention, <laughs> yeah. according to Trump. He's transactional. Yes. Can I say yeah. that um, I am so excited about this vice president, too, and how what a, just a regular guy he is he was a farmer he's a, a military he was a teacher a high school football coach everything that the republicans act like macho man he is and and they can't stand it and and compared to vance the difference it's like my husband said are they trying to lose votes pissing off <laughs> the, the women yeah. calling single women that don't have children cat ladies and 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 some of them served in the military and pissing off the black community saying i didn't know kamala was black like he didn't have <laughs> eyes we need to look into this i said he's orange maybe we need to look into that but yeah it's just, it's just, I love Walls, and there's, I can't wait for the debate between him and Vance because he's going to cream him. I know oh, it. And the thing oh. about Walls, sorry, go on, Mel. He's going to cream him big time. Mm. Go ahead, Lena. Well, Walls brings everything that Deanne just said to the table, but more because he fought for diversity and tolerance all his teacher life. He could have been all those things, tick all those boxes and still be a really straight guy, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. not have much idea of how other people's lives are. But he fought to have kids have breakfast and lunch every day in the schools he was in. He fought for the gay kids in the 90s before it was, you know, this thing. So he is above average compassion. Yes. Oh, your average American guy. You yeah. know, I give him uber ticks. And, you know, he owns a gun. He he hunts. He's got a dog. Yeah. 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 Every yeah. So let's talk about gun safety. Bingo. Bingo. And he will. Awesome. And when they and win, will. there's going to be a lot of gun reform in this country. Yes. Yeah. You, know, you can feel it. It's a game changer in every way. But I think we also all feel there's some more twists in the tail. Yeah. I so can't... what about RFK? Oh, I was just going to bring that up. But let me just touch on, on Tim Walls real quick. Um, intuitively, I feel he's going to bring the rule vote, which is traditionally Republican, but he's going to mm. bring to Kamala. 
And, you know, Trump is starting this smear campaign that she's a communist, they're Marxists, they're this, they're exactly. that. Well, excuse me, what is Marxist or communist about giving children who can't afford it hot Ooh. lunches? What is communist or Marxist about equality for everybody? Isn't that what America is supposed to be about? What is Marxist about, um, uh, you know, lowering prescription drug cost, lowering grocery prices so people can afford to eat, yes. uh, fair taxation? I don't see anything Marxist or communist about that. Do They're you? just words. I know. They're just words, and he would have no definition of a Marxist or distinguish between a communist and a socialist. And, but the problem is America has been laboring basically since the 30s under this. The whole reason Americans haven't got health care is because of the S word. Like, it's not socialist to give your people health care. Every functional government in the world uses your tax to supply your health care. Right. So America has to come to grips with this nonsense argument that it's radical to do these small, compassionate things. Right. And I think the genius of this campaign is to reclaim the buzzwords of liberty and freedom and all those things, because the right's always been good at that. There you go. You know, it's funny. I just was in Europe. I taught a seminar in Slovakia for a couple of days and oh, wow. I was in the UK. And, um, you know, I talked to people about their health care when they asked me what we paid a month for health care in this country. Before Gary retired, we were paying almost $2,000 a month health care. It's insane. Insane. And, you know, people in this country say, yeah, but in Europe, they pay like, 50 or 60% taxes. Okay. But that's still cheaper. You get by cheaper if you pay more taxes than what we're paying a month for healthcare insurance. Exactly. And A, they don't pay that much tax. That's part of the mythology too. But that's where it goes. And as a health sociologist, I used to have to teach my students the different models of healthcare around the world. The real kicker with the American system is you guys actually pay more to have the worst system. That's my point. You pay more. So in Australia, it's free, cradle to grave. And so if you have premature twins who have to be in intensive care for three months, it costs nothing. If you have to have four stents in your heart, it costs nothing. If you have to have extended cancer treatment, it costs nothing. Or we have a mixed model. You can be insured, which is a joke figure too. It's fifteen hundred Australian dollars a year. <laughs> okay, wow. and what wow. does that get you? That means you'll get your own um, room at the hospital, for example, as opposed to being in a shared room. But you know what? Other things have to change. You have the same doctors in those systems, right? right? So you still get the best surgeon at two in the morning in the public system as you do in the private. Wow. You know, um, I agree with that. That's a culture change for doctors. I, was I going think, to say, yeah. I, think um, I would rather pay more in taxes because you end up saving money. Exactly. Compared exactly. to how much you have to pay for healthcare costs. I'm on Medicare now, um, yeah. but I still am paying like, I don't know, almost $300 a month or $400 a month. I'd rather pay more tax and get. And have it delivered to you. Correct. Right. I mean, and so this is, yeah, well, now we're on my hobby horse. So I think the Australian model is worth looking at. I agree. So 1.5% of everyone's tax, there's a levy on top. So your taxes, let's say for argument's sake, 40,000, your income is $50,000 or something, right? Whatever your tax is, you pay an extra 1.5% and that directly goes to Medicare for everybody. If you earn over 200,000, it's 2%. Wow. And I have never heard a wealthy Australian complain about that, ever. 
How could you complain about it? <laughs> well, you can sleep at night knowing that your next door neighbor's not going to die on the side of the road with a preventable illness. You know, like, no, that's where you should be, feel pride in your nation for 12, delivering. 12 years ago, I had triple bypass surgery. Mm -hmm. I had insurance, but the surgeon, I think, charged like, um, I think it was 25,000 insurance covered it. But with everything, this is 12 years ago, OR cost, hospital, everything, it was like $600,000. Stop. And that's when you, what, and the biggest cause of foreclosures on homes in America yeah. is medical. Yes. And yet people say, oh, I don't want that socialist medicine. You yeah. know, it is a crazy situation. I was going to say that if, you know, you got a little old lady, maybe she's lost her husband, all she's living on or man is social security. And then she's sick. And because she gets sick, she gets all these bills, loses her home. And then she's out on the street. And then you're, it's a crime to be poor here. Now they're wanting to make it yeah. a crime to be poor. Yeah, yeah, for and, sure. Well, luckily, if you're above a certain age, you get Medicare, but you pay for that out of your social security and they right. some of the magas complain about the cost of social security excuse me social security depending on what you paid into it for a lot of people is about a thousand or fifteen hundred a month and then you got to pay medicare out of that how the hell do they expect anybody to live on that right. if yes. it's ridiculous it's ridiculous well, you and know i'm what hoping the next because you know these things roll over um, over generations, you know, um, and just get accepted as normal. And I'm hoping there's going to be a break in that and young people start to think, mm -hmm. and even me as an old lefty, why should your boss pay your health care? <laughs> That's why you pay tax is for your health care. And so it's even pre-Reagan and all of that. Americans think anything in tax is evil and bad. Not if it's covering you for lifetime health. It's not evil and bad. And it's cheaper. You've already paid it. And it's cheaper. I, I don't feel bad if I have to have surgery at two in the morning with a top-notch thing because I've worked for 45 years. And it's know. cheaper. It's cheaper than what we're paying out. Yeah. Um what I see coming is tremendous health care reform in this country. I think the insurance companies are kind of very powerful. I don't know if we'll ever have a single payer system, but what I do see is caps putting on it and making it even more affordable so that people can afford to pay it and making it um, much cheaper and more doable. Um, at some point- But it is a whole culture change required because the pharmaceutical industry runs it and it's not a healthcare system at all. It's an insurance system. It exactly. Right. But you know what, Lena, you hit on it is when it's, it's changing when a lot of the oldies die off and the young people, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, come into their, you know, thirties, forties, blah, blah, blah. My feeling is at that point, then there will be a single payor system. That's what I see, but it's going to take a long time. Yeah. What do you or think? not. It's funny. Things sort of look like they're in stone. Like sitting here, I would say, and I've said to friends often, America is a million miles from universal health care right? <laughs> because of the system. But I do believe, just like we saw with Kamala herself, things change very quickly. Once the zeitgeist finally moves, it's like the Berlin Wall. It was there until one night it wasn't, you know. <laughs> Which I predicted, I, I predicted would come down and people thought I was crazy. You know, I think you're right. When I grew up in the South, I was born in 54, but in the 60s and I graduated high school in 72. Um, Me too. Well, there you go. One <laughs> that's, never, that's, that's music. One would have never thought I mean, I remember signs that said whites only. If you yeah. said back then that at some point there would be a woman of color running for yeah. president, they would have been like, what? Shirley Chisholm did back in the 70s, but nobody took it seriously. Yeah. But you're right. The zeitgeist can change very quickly. Zeitgeist, I meant. It can change very quickly. What's yes. zeitgeist? 
Zeitgeist means spirit of the time. Like what's Oh, called? thank you. <laughs> or the wave. wave. It, it's okay. a German word and we haven't got an English equivalent, have we, Mel? Um, um, the zeitgeist yeah. just means the vibe. So just as Trump was on top of the vibe at that point after the debate and when whatever happened, the ear business and all that, and five minutes later, it all changed. You know, I'm exaggerating about the five minutes, but not very long. He yeah. had the momentum at that point. Zeit means time, Geist means spirit or ghost. So the spirit of the time, the energy of the time. So yeah. It can change pretty quickly. Lena, you brought up something. I want to run past you and Deanne. RFK calls him called himself oh. a Democrat. I want to throw up. Yeah. He's resigning and he says that he's going to endorse Donald Trump. I'm sure the Kennedy family are is having conniption fits about that. Mm. My question is when he resigns, and my feeling he will or steps down and supports Trump, do you think that that's going to hurt the Dems any with the independent vote? We'll start with Deanne. Deanne, what do you think? No, I don't. Uh, me? I don't think so, because I think he's weird. I mean, he's the, the bear and, the, you know, all the stuff that he's done. I mean, he's just, he is weird. He's strange. He fits right in. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that it's going to hurt the Dems. In fact, it may even hurt the Republicans, you know, if anything. But, I, you know, I don't think it's going to hurt them. What do you think, Lena? You may feel different. I think this is a very vulnerable moment in history. And if he siphoned off 5%, 7% mm -hmm. um, of the vote, he could do hellish damage for what? So I'm not staying awake at night. I agree with you generally, Deanne. I think that, you know, there's such momentum for the blues. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he should be allowed to go on. No. I'm sorry, I'm old school. Again, I'm using the analogy of the car park, but someone needs to have a staunch conversation with that man. <laughs> sure they have. He's not listening. The worm ate his brain. Yeah. Uh, and his voice, um, I know there was an issue causing that voice, and that sort of undermines him, thank God, on some level. Um, he, I'm sure he'd be an interesting guy to have a drink with right. at midnight once in a bar <laughs> but no he mustn't go forward and I'm a bit worried I'm not mm, I just resent the fact coming from a democratic dynasty he's prepared to do this at all it makes him more selfish than the yeti it's he a selfish some. selfish run yeah he may take some but I don't think he's going to take enough that it's going to make Kamala not win the only reason I think he's doing is because he went to the Harris team and said he would support them. And they said, no. Oh, really? No. I didn't hear that. He said something about it or whatever. So now he's going to go to the Trump side. My feeling is he might siphon off a few votes, but I also think that the independents who would think of voting for him rather than vote for Trump, I see many of them then voting for Kamala. Me too. Mm -hmm. I think we're seeing that for the first time ever, Republicans, lifelong Republicans sensing this is not a normal time. Right. And even if I only do it once. I'm going to... Yeah, yeah. And I think once they do that and the sky doesn't fall in, you know, so for example, in Australia, we had conscription, Vietnam, because we follow the US into every armed conflict, you know. Right. So we had full conscription here. And I know families whose sons were conscripted and then a Labor, we had an election, a Labor leader got in and stopped conscription. And many of those families were conservative families and they have said, I will never vote Conservative again because Labor stopped my son going to Vietnam. Which was and I think this could be one message. of those elections of people thinking, I don't want to ever see a Trump lookalike in my party if I'm Conservative. Well, what happened? I think it's great. I think is a warning 
uh, to England. It's a warning to Australia. It's a warning to Canada. It's a warning to all democratic countries because, oh, yeah. you know, for a long time, we thought something like this couldn't happen in America. Yeah. And, we are. and it can right. happen anywhere. So people have to be diligent. People have to learn not to let somebody play on our xenophobia, on our fears, not to let our emotions make our decisions, but let our common yeah. sense, our intellect make our decisions. Yes. And that's the yes. zeitgeist that I, that's the, that's the spirit of the time that I see changing in this country where we're stepping out of the fear and we're coming into, okay, let's roll up our sleeves, get to work. Um, and exactly. See what we can do. <laughs> And yeah. for young seeing, people, go on, go on, dear. Oh, I was just saying, I'm seeing if I put them side by side, I'm seeing on Trump's side, hate, fear, racism, division, revenge. And this side, I'm seeing inclusion, happiness, joy. Mm. What are we going to do for you, not me? You know, yeah. what are we going to do for the people? I see it just, it's like, if there was, to, to, you see them side by side, why would not anybody want to be over here? Yes. You know? Yes. Don't make I sense. I think it's extraordinary, but I was just going to make the point about young people. Um, we know from every sort of study, if people don't vote young, they tend not to ever vote. Mm -hmm. If they vote young, they tend to keep voting. Right. That's so this is massive in terms of keeping the momentum going into the future. It's really, really important. And as a generalisation, the US has kept its um, democracy limping along with barely 50% participation. Yeah. You know, it's actually pathetic. I remember pathetic. I remember when Bill Clinton won and there, everybody talked about voter apathy, voter apathy, voter apathy. If there's anything good that came out of Donald Trump whatsoever... Well, it's going to bring about a lot of reform, but my feeling is it did bring it into voter apathy because uh, people now know in order to save our democracy, they have to vote. Yes. 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 And the young people. And a democracy only works if people are involved. That's you correct. know, the fairies don't do it. You and have to actually participate. So we can't step out and say, you know, it's, it's like a John, it's like a President Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to get out of the defeatist attitude, like, well, my vote's not going to yeah. count anyway, so bye bye. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference. Right. right. Well, my vote does count, and I am mm -hmm. going to vote, and to hell with you, Donald Trump. That's yeah. the attitude that I see changing, where people are going to... I'm looking forward to going to vote. I'm I like, can't wow. wait. I think it's going to be such a buzz, it the is. actual process. But also, it's coming at a time where his shtick is old. Yes. It's old, it's old, yeah. You know, he represented something in 2016. I mean, we all went, but you can step back and see why it, it seemed different and stuff. It's It's an old routine. And you can't compete with boredom. And now he's boring. boring. It's like you know. Barack Obama said last night, you know, if the original movie was bad, the sequel is worse. <laughs> yeah. I love, I might have misquoted him, but that's essentially what yeah, he said. Yeah, yeah, that was the truth. Next, Total. next question yeah. would be, you know, Trump is always trying some kind of smear campaign. I think they're pooping in their pants because they did, they hadn't planned on a campaign with Kamala running. But I mean, the answer is pretty obvious. He's trying every smear campaign he can against her. She's a, she's a Marxist. She's a communist. She's this. She's that. Do you think he's got anything huge up his sleeve that's going to kind of slow down the momentum of Kamala? See, I see it differently. No matter what he tries, it's going to increase her momentum. <laughs> yes, this is what's happening, isn't it? What do you think, Dan? Well, you know, they don't have anything but stupid stuff that are just ticking people off more. It's like, oh, she laughs like a hyena. I hate her laugh. And then she comes back with, that was my mother's laugh. She laughs from her belly. And it's like, yes, we want laughter. We don't want a sour puss guy. And then they say, well, 
was it Hillary didn't smile enough and she smiles too much to me as a woman. I, I think this is insulting to women that is telling a mm. woman you need to smile or you need, she wears a tan suit. She wore a brown suit. They, they have nothing but personal insults, which mm. is, is, is just ticking people off. So yeah, I think uh, anything they throw at her, it, it just bounces right off that I'm rubber, your glue thing. It just bounces yeah. right yeah. off. So or yeah, anybody. I don't think it's going to hurt her. I think she's, uh, she's got this. She's a prosecutor. She's dealt with criminals, like she said before, yeah. like him. For anybody <laughs> that wants to know the definition of karma, when Hillary <laughs> spoke, she was brilliant. Yes, and I remember was. when his thing was, lock her up, lock her up. Mm -hmm. When she was speaking, they started chanting, lock him okay. up. Wow. The look on her face. And I was like, that is so karmic. So that is karma, you all. She smiled then. <laughs> she smiled then. She didn't say anything. Yeah. But a big smile. Um, yes, totally. I mean, this uh, because when Trump was appearing in New York, I was in New York and I, I went to pay the pilgrimage to the courthouse. On the one hand, it was great. There were only six or eight people there, four on each side. Magus didn't rush to defend him. OK, and they're not going to now, you know, like, but that's another story. My point was. I thought, why can't 20 New Yorkers a day just go out and chant, lock him up while he's trying to do his stupid soundbite every day? I think New York missed that bit of theatre. Mm -hmm. But the other thing they did do well was ignore him in that sense. That is the best way to get to Donald Trump, ignore that him. That works too. And, mm -hmm. you know, last night... You know, they they kind of blasted Trump, but they also talked about what they were going to do for yes. this country. And Trump mm -hmm. is just, I'm sure he's smearing ketchup and throwing hamburgers everywhere. Oh, you wouldn't want to be in his sphere between now and now. Because <gasps> it's never him. Here's a question by user. Uh, and a lot of psychics have talked about this and Tarot readers. I want to put it to you all, if that's okay. Will Republican candidate Donald Trump have health problems between now and Election Day? I'm concerned that he may suffer either a heart attack or stroke before Election Day due to his multiple pressures of court cases, lawsuits, and the pursuit of presidency. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, what do you think? think? You want me to go? Yes. Yeah. I, I feel like I keep getting somewhere in end of October, November time is difficult to tell, but I keep feeling like he's going to have a stroke because he heart or stroke. I keep feeling because when he sees the momentum, he's already getting upset when he sees he's going to lose yeah. and lose to a woman, a woman yeah. of color. No black less. woman. <laughs> yes. That he didn't know was black, but he thought she was, he doesn't understand biracial, but he, he knows uh, what it is. He was he just does. a bigot. He knows he's not that stupid. He's going to, he's it's in the way he eats and then the anger that's going to be in him. I mm. think he's going to cause himself to have a stroke and, and uh, he's going to be in a facility because I never get him going to jail. I always get yeah. it. I always get facility is the word I hear. Yep. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, and he's 78 and hasn't had a vegetable since childhood <laughs> and has done no exercise ever in his entire adult life. It's a miracle he's still, you know, around to abuse everybody. But there has to be a time when he pops his cork, you know what I mean? Like Better yet, ask him to spell vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Man, oh. woman, camera, vegetable. Ooh, I couldn't, I up. couldn't, I couldn't pass that one up. My feeling is my guides have shown me for a very long time dark clouds around his head area. And mm. I perceive that as a stroke. But I hope, I mean, I don't wish that on anybody. No. But if it happens, I hope it happens after the election. Yes, exactly. So should it happen in the next month or so, what do they do? My feeling is, after the election, I see some major health issues for him. I don't think it'll happen before. Because if mm. it happens before the election, then, you know, it's very easy to make him a martyr. Oh, he got sick. Yeah, no. exactly. So 
I think it's going to happen after the election. I do agree. As you say, Lena, he'll pop a cork. I agree with you, Deanne. I do see a CBA or stroke. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think it's more like after the election. I, I hope it's November. I hope it's after too, exactly like the failed assassination attempt. It was like, thank God it didn't work because he could have been it. Whereas the narcissist nightmare is to fade into obscurity and for the rest of his life from next year, it's if he's compass mentis, he'll be spending the next three, five, seven years in court mm -hmm. and he won't be able to handle that either. And you know what, Lena? So, that was prophetic because that's exactly what I see happening, him fading into obscurity. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be the worst. Mm -hmm. That's the worst thing that can happen. And or if he has I, a stroke, he can't speak. I think he's going to be, well, I don't know if he'll be in an institution, but maybe home care or something. Because after it'll be up market, right. either 24 hour care or a very resort like place, you know. But after the stroke I'm seeing, it's, it's going to be Katie bar the door. I mean, he'll still live, I think. I don't know, but it's going to be. Yeah, make... yeah, I don't see him actually carking it. Um, but here's the thing, you know. It's like, imagine what it's going to be like after the GOP loses and whether he's functioning or not functioning, they are going to cannibalise themselves after this. Absolutely. Absolutely. They worship him. They, they, they worship him no matter what he does, no matter what he says. That's his base, that what's left of the base. Yes. Because I think with people like Maggers, there are some, you know, you can find them on YouTube and they always give me joy. I used to be Magger and now I've seen the light, you know. There are those, but I think many more have left without saying anything because they can't admit they were conned for nine years of their lives. So they've just pulled away. And... I, I just, MAG is not the real issue to me after this. They were always at most 20, 25%. You'd have to think they've dropped five over the nine years. The real problem is Trumpism. Right. Um, being rude, name calling, not, not cooperating with anything, you know, that just that immature, vulgar behaviour. I blame Newt Gingrich for that. He was the one who lowered the tone to the gutter years ago, paved the way for Trump. So it's how they spring back. Are they going to put their grown-ups in and start, you know, working mm -hmm. as public servants or are they going to continue the circus? Well, I think you hit, I think I agree that we have to analyse what caused this Trumpism? Mm. What causes vulgarity? And I think it started with Newt Gingrich and it just kind of, you know, um, it grew slowly, but here we are. I think we have to analyze the cause of it and how we can prevent that in the future. You know, it's like, I, I heard this story about Nazi Germany and there was a village, I forget where, but, you know, uh, there were a lot of people there that were Nazis and they actually turned in Jews. But after the war, they said, and that same population in the village, minus the Jews that went to the death camps, there was no, one was there was no Nazis at all. Nobody was. No. They were the same people. So I think a lot of them will crawl back into the woodwork and be yes. shamed or not say anything about their Trumpism, if you will. No, and exactly the same happened with Vietnam. If you were on the streets protesting the draft and protesting the war, you had the full weight of the police down on you, mounted police, hundreds arrested all the time, family split. Wow. Um, it was fully dramatic. How dare you say this? Of course, you know, we've got to be in this conflict. After... Eventually, and it was a zeitgeist moment again, from the 10% who were anti-war, there came a moment as the dead bodies kept coming back 
which they don't show for any of the other subsequent wars, right? They they didn't show us bodies coming back from Iraq, Afghanistan or any of that, but then they did. And after a period of time, people, a majority objected to the war, but if you ask any of them now, that's my point, oh, I was always against the war. Well, I was, I protested against the war. Well, me too, but, you know, right. they weren't. They weren't, and they were locking out their own sons. How dare you try and avoid your duty and all of this, you know, yeah. total crap. Here's a I good was a question. baby, so I don't remember, but I heard about that. Yeah. Well, I, I grew up during that era. Here's, you know, um, protest became a way of life. Um, mm. But at least our voices did change a lot of mores, and it's kind of frightening to see it swinging back to what it was before. Yeah, um, having the same fights 50 years later. It's exhausting being a light worker in this lifetime. <laughs> this is a really good question. I was just in Slovakia, and I was about three hours drive from away from the Ukrainian border. And it was this little town just kind of nestled in the foothills of the Carpathians. It was beautiful. Mm. A lot of people there are nervous about Putin. And this is a very good question. Hi to everybody in Slovakia. Hi to people in the Czech Republic. Hi to people in the UK. Hello, Australia. Um, <laughs> anyway, it says, hello, Mel and lovely ladies. Uh, you've been to Slovakia recently, Mel. There's a strong push for Rus from uh, Russian assets in East Europe to go back to a dictatorship installed by Russia especially in Slovakia, is becoming very obvious. How do you see this panning out? Thank you from a fan from Europe. I have mad respect for Kamala and all Americans fighting for your freedom. Right. Shall we pull some cards on this one? Yep. Sure. Are they wanting to, they're wanting to make a dictatorship, you're saying, in I can't say it. Slovakia? Trying to push Russia. Slovakia. Will Slovakia become a Russian satellite again? Is that the question? Right. With the assets and the way that Russia is infusing money so they can control the country. Okay. Mm. Can I, I'll, I'll start while you guys are shuffling. Yeah. You know, when I was doing my seminar, we were talking about Ho'oponopono. That's a Hawaiian idea of forgiveness and making restitution. And in the beginning, nobody wanted to speak up. And one of the guys said, well, the reason is this used to be a communist country and people are still, you know, carrying some post-traumatic stress. And I looked at him and I said, that's not an excuse for me. It's about getting it out. And then I said, here, I'm a gay man. And I came out essentially mm. Eastern Europe, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I wasn't being cocky about it. But I said, don't lose your voice. One of the ways that you can keep your power is to speak up and speak out. And people were nervous about Russia. They were nervous about Putin invading, um, and if not militarily, uh, monetarily. Mm, mm. And, you know, I they really, many, many of them cherish their democracy. And I see Slovakia remaining a democracy. I see, you know, uh, a different president coming there and an end to allowing Russian assets to flow into those Eastern European countries. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the United States has 100,000 troops right on the Slovakian border in case Putin tries anything militarily. But what's more frightening is what will they do economically? And so I don't think they're going to succeed. I don't think Russia will succeed. I see Slovakia and those Eastern European countries remaining democracies. That's mm. my take. Yeah. Well, I got the first card was the world card, which I think is a good Yay. starting point in this conversation. Because we're in the internet age, good, bad, or ugly, you know, uh, People can see through the propaganda much quicker. So although people can generate misinformation hourly, nonetheless, particularly young people, don't want to go back. And I, I also think that's a brilliant slogan that's emerging from Kamala and Tim Waltz is we're not going back. Mm -hmm. I think that is so important because it crystallises so much. But this is the energy 
um, young Slovakians in particular feel they're part of the globalised world and they don't want to go back. Good. Magician, they've got more power than they realise, which is your point to them. No. Right. That's my point. Right. Speak up, you know. Let yeah. Yeah. Don't get hung up on yeah. the communist era things. That's what Putin wants. No, my whole point was step out of that. Absolutely. And here, as Hogarth refers to this stinky fish message um, coming through, there will be propaganda about why we'll keep Russia saying, you know, we'll keep you from going under financially by giving you you know, this pipeline of oil or gas or something, and they'll try and make the economic argument here with this Queen of Pentacles. But it's not going to flow. The big cards are these, and they must speak up or it's going backwards. But, but I guess the question is, will they? No. Okay, good. No, I don't but, think they will. Okay. But will the people speak up? My, this is a question. I think there's energy here, and we're looking at this world card again. I they're going to speak up in different ways. Now, even though we might come from different groups historically, right. being arrested means different things in different countries and cultures, and they are facing very oppressive regimes nonetheless. But I think what this is about is the keyboard warriors. They can now speak to each other without having to have a drop, you know, on the bus stop inside the umbrella. Like, you know, it's a different world now. So they they have got voices already, and I'm sure they're using them. My friend Eva was in the Czech Republic, which was former part of Czechoslovakia. Mm. And I asked her what it was like because she was there during the communist. And I said, could you say what you want? And she goes, no. I mean, no, I mean they were completely uh, a puppet of the Soviet Union. They were ruled by the Soviet Union. And it was one of the staunchest, uh, uh, I don't even know, communist countries. And she said, if you spoke up, you know, people would turn you in and you would get arrested, no trial, no nothing, just... And this is the problem with surveillance states. It pits neighbours against neighbours, even partners. So everyone is perennially paranoid because your brother or your auntie or your co-worker or your neighbour can turn you in. But isn't that... And they did. Of, isn't that kind of what was going on here when uh, in families you know, fam family members turned against family members because of politics, maybe not yeah. turning this into the government, but family members not talking to each other because of the Trumpism. Yeah, it's shocking, but I don't think it's the same dimension. Well, it's a different dimension, totally. It's a different dimension, but it's the same underlying dynamic, which is dividing people. Correct. Yeah. And making people suspicious of each other. Deanne, what do you think? Okay, so... I don't know how close I am here because I don't know a lot about Slovakia or this. Oh, I love cold reads. It's so I'll, I'll tell country. you, it's I'll tell you what I get not knowing anything much about yeah. it. I get this Slovakia. I got instability and maybe uh, financial instability, and and maybe that I don't know if they're trying to you know we'll help you you know with money with finances whatever. But I get a lack of achievement. Uh, that they're not going to be able to go through with this. Um, I get there's manipulation mm, in the, that's involved in this and um, conniving and trickery and things like yes. that. So Can't believe it. <laughs> I feel they are, uh, these people, they're guarded. Maybe they are having a hard time, but they're guarded and they're, but they're, mm -hmm. and they're uh -huh. weary, but they're still going to fight this. And I feel like they, there's going to be some new beginning for them, some clarity, some truth, some new beginning. I don't feel like they're going to be able to do it for them. Um, I, I mean, I don't feel like they're going to be able to take over. I think the people will stand up, but I think yeah. they're having a hard time. I'm getting that yeah. they're, they're in unstable financially or something, and they're trying to take advantage of that fact. All about the voices being heard. Yeah. Yes. 
And okay. I got the, the bigger version, and I think you really nailed it, Deanne, with the money. I got quite a few pentacles there too. They're going to manipulate them through money for sure. Um, but I think that was great, Reed. I look at outcomes. <laughs> I look at outcomes. It was an excellent read. I look at outcomes, and the outcome is it won't work. I see Slovakia oh. remaining democratic. Yes. But it's, you know... Um, Eastern Europe is very nervous. They're very nervous, and oh. rightfully so. Here's a good one. Okay, we got time for a few more. I, I'm loving this. This is great. <laughs> so Children of the podiatrist who gave 45 bone spurs diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> Their father was a commercial tenant of Fred Trump and did it as a face yes. to Trump Sr., in order to get better a better rent deal. Well, will this sway any of Trump's groupies? I, I, I... No, that they won't believe it. You can't tell them anything. They won't believe yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. They won't believe it. And I remember this story from years ago before he was running for president. I remember about the podiatrist and Fred organizing it. And I have heard this before. But yeah, nothing moves them. I mean that 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 core base, nothing moves them until Trump is defeated, and then they'll go back into the woodwork. Oh, well, we didn't like we're not a Trumpist, you know, whatever. But I think the bone spurs has been resurrected because the group he continually abuses veterans and active service people. Yeah. It's insane. And that's gonna be at least five more nails in Trump's coffin. Yeah. Uh, that bone spur story will keep coming forward and coming forward, uh, you know, and specifically to whom Trump is giving the Presidential Medal of Freedom <laughs> and, and comparing that to the Medal of Honor for Valor is like, what? And he doubled down on it. He was given a chance to say something else and he just, he just said it. He just continues on with the madness. Okay, the FBI raided the home of, Dim of Dimitri Symes, I think. Is yes. this a is this the sign of the Mueller report being aggressively revisited? Yes, that's what I heard. Yeah. What do you guys yeah. think? Hey, I'm getting yes. I don't know who this person is, but I'm getting yeah. yes. And, and I, I'm saying yes, too. I'm saying um, and I mentioned this on my last video. I think it's come through, you know, Lev Parnes, who goes on the cable TV. I think it goes back to Lev and there was Igor. Igor wouldn't do a deal. Lev did the deal. And I think yes, gave yes. up everybody. Okay. Um, hi, Auntie Mel, Dr. Lena and Deanne. I love you guys. My question, Mexico elected their first female president. Mm. Yay. Will we elect our first female president in November? Yes. Oh, surely, surely. Um, get out there and vote, yes. Not a question. It's all in your hands. Go mm -hmm. and vote and encourage one other person to vote, and that doubles your vote. Yep. How do you see the USA-Mexico relationship? I see it improving tremendously. I do too. Me too. And Cuba, hopefully. Yes, at some point I've been saying that, you know, I see a Cuba Libre, a free Cuba, Cuba, uh -huh. and uh, I see Kamala really working to get a better working relationship with Cuba. And uh, at some point I see a, a free Cuba and a democratic Cuba. And my feeling is we'll see it in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's another one of those. It's the longest embargo, I think, in the world. You right. know, it's 70 years or some nonsense, and Cuba's tiny. Um, but there has to be a culture shift with the right-wing Cubans, anti-Castro, to the point where I don't see why they haven't encouraged opening up of Cuba just for entrepreneurial reasons, you know. I mean, uh, but I think... Again, that third generation thinks differently. The grandchildren of the emigrants are going, well, really, you know, why can't we just go to Cuba, you know, for holidays? So I think so. And I love the vision of Kamala 
meeting the new Mexican woman president too, whose name yeah. I'm just... Oh, that's going to, that's incredible. You know, I've been saying that I see for um, Central America and Mexico, especially with the president of El Salvador, how he changed that country for the better, I might say. I'm seeing like um, more like a Latin American union yes. that will pull together a lot of Latin American, Central American countries, or they'll have like the same currency, like the European Union. And I yeah. see those two or three countries joining and then it gaining momentum. Um, that's what and I, I think historically the US has to do some cleaning up mm -hmm. of the behavior. The CIA destroyed democratically elected governments over and over in Latin America because they're going for the left. And most Americans, it's la 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 la. What do you mean? So then Nixon came with the war on drugs which created the cartels, <laughs> you know, yes. which then led to the gangs, which led to the impossibility of being able to live in these countries. America was instrumental in the decline of Latin America actively from the 60s to the 90s. So, again, it's hard to move forward until everyone acknowledges their part in the story you know, instead of just pointing fingers. Yep. Well, Lena, you said something I want to touch on. You said that um, we all felt that that Kamala would win by a landslide, but you said, yes, she'll win the, the popular vote. That's true. But will she win the electoral vote? Uh, the electoral vote is, you know, it's quite possible for somebody to win the popular vote. Yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. How well we know that. So, but I, I think everything will be thrown in the path of that happening. Um, but again, like I said just earlier, I think people wouldn't tolerate quite the same behaviour like when the, the vote was so close with Gore and stuff and then Gore just stepped back, Mr Nice Guy, and um, Hillary was defrauded you know, in many ways, including the Electoral College. I think they're going to sense on some level, despite trying everything, they cannot get away with it this time. So I think she will get there, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. But no one can relax for a nanosecond, and this is not over on November 6th. That's right. No. That's right. What do you think, Dan? Oh. I, I I just lost I I I don't know. But what would say repeat the question? I was listening to, to I said it's quite possible for someone to win the popular vote. Oh yeah, yeah. Will they win the electoral vote? Yes, so I think they will. I think they will. Yeah. I they, they've got enough and I love the countdown when they did that countdown, a roll call thing. Oh, yeah. Why do you guys think and I'm I'm a little confused why California, they all were given I have this many votes, this state, this many votes. And when they got to California, they they didn't give a comment. I was curious about that if you guys knew why that was. I can't remember that. I didn't and also, know. did you notice little Wayne when he came down with the braids and stuff? He he was on Apprentice, and I think he got a pardon from Trump, and he's supporting Kamala. <laughs> Yay. Everyone is. It's so interesting. It's so, it's the instinctive place to go. Either, you know, it's because of them policies and that's what you do. But for other people who are exhausted by the circus, they've finally got an option. Mm -hmm. They know they can get off this nightmare if they're prepared to go and vote blue. And I think there has to be millions of Americans who are going tired to do of it. it. Tired they're of just it. tired of it. And people, you know, for a long time said, "Well, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, it's I'll, I'll vote uh, for the best of the two evils." And I think people would just hold their nose and vote. And in this election, I don't see anybody holding their nose and vote. No, it, it's vote joy. She has conveyed the joy. It was an impossible task, but she's done it. And I would say, if this was her three years ago, if Joe had done this so late, it would be much, you know, it would be complicated. And the timing, how dare we? out the universe right <laughs> the timing's perfect people have 
you know, the concentration of a caterpillar, the average modern human. So it had to be this compressed. You One know. question. And then yeah. we'll... Then I do have to go. Thank you. I mean, no, no, I'm, I'm, I wish we could keep on doing this. Yeah, me too. I, know, I got one too, but I'm, I'm going to wait. Okay. There's been a lot of talk about, you know, just direct election of the president in this country and ending the electoral vote. And it's always brought up by the losers, of course. But do you all see a time in this country when we will have direct election of the president free from gerrymandering and also, I guess, Will there be an end to this whole electoral thing? It made sense when the founding parents did it. I'm not so sure it works for the zeitgeist now. What do you guys think? Uh, we'll wait for Deanne and her pendulum. I feel, yes, uh, there will be an end to the electoral vote, but it won't be anytime soon. I mean, I think it's going to be beyond five years that that may happen. Um, let's see what be six, seven, eight. I'm getting about maybe eight years or something like it's going to be a while. I don't know how That's long. That's probably realistic. That's probably realistic. It'll be after the 2028 election. Mm -hmm. um, because if there's too much to do between 24 and 28, it's it's not going to, you know, it should be number one in my view, but it, it's not going to be. So that timing, I think, is really interesting because... It has to be part of a whole suite of issues. So, for example, in Australia, we've got seven states and territories, obviously much smaller than you guys. But the point is I can vote in any country town in Australia, in any city in Australia, in any state in Australia, and the game is exactly the same. The polling booth will look the same. The rules are the same because it's a national election. Mm -hmm. We have state elections and they can be a bit different here and there and it's up to you to know what is happening in your state. But a national election should be a standardised process. Should. Right? And that has to happen in America because at the moment it's actually, I'm sorry to break the news, because it's not actually a real democracy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with lots of people vote, but so much is stacked against people engaging with the process and it's so complicated. Unbelievable. I've been dealing with this stuff for eight years now on a daily basis. It is so complicated. At some point, I do see an end to the end to the electoral college as we know it. Has to, but I'm thinking it's going to be about 15 years, one five years into the future. What I do see coming, and I agree with Lena, is that there's going to be a standardized voting system for federal elections. Not yes, states. not states. States can do what they like. It's too complicated emotionally, but for national elections. I see more standardized, but I see at some point an end to the electoral college. Uh, but I also see uh, an end to the gerrymandering the way it's working now. I see it being more fair and not to use it for all the BS that they're using it for now. Absolutely. So and that brings us to what America really needs. I think there is something called the Federal Election Commission or something but they need to have more teeth. So you shouldn't have to go to the Supreme Court, particularly now, but even in the good old days, you shouldn't have to go to the Supreme Court. The Federal Election Commission should be able to look at maps and then the new maps and a panel of, you know, legal informed um people make a decision whether you're adjusting that because suddenly you've had a demographic change. That's happened in Texas, which is why I think Texas is going to end up purple. Um, there are legitimate reasons to shift things sometimes, but gerrymanders, gerrymander. I grew up in a gerrymandered state, and so I know exactly what it looks like and exactly like it feels, and it took us 20 years Wow. Um, after our Trump to stop that nonsense. 
but this is a modern world. It shouldn't take that long. This yeah. has been incredible. Uh, mm -hmm. Deanne, thank you. I asked Deanne if she could get a hold of you, Lena, to set it up. Let's do this again, please. I really, really Yeah, sure. Love. Let's do it in about a month or something, three or four weeks. Okay, oh, there you go. Um, I, I will look forward to it. And so, Lena, how do they get a hold of you yeah. again? <laughs> so my email, which is under most of my videos, um, email me about a reading. Okay. And you'll put up the email too. I'll put it up on. Thanks. Go below. <laughs> go to everybody's channel. Thumbs up. Subscribe. <laughs> um, Deanne, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, they can either go to my website, manifestshop.net, um, or they can call me at 1-833-277-8105. And if they like, they could also email me at deannesshieldmaidentarot at gmail.com, whichever way is easier for them. And before we end up, we uh, we are sold out for the Chicago event. We are taking... Uh, Names for wait list. I have openings on my for my Peru tour next September of 2025. Very few. So if you want to go, it's going to be an incredible tour. Uh, call my office. And I also have openings for Iceland in October of next year. And also on the Italian French Riviera cruise in May. If you'd like I'll stop. <laughs> yep. That's what I want. <laughs> That's going to be an incredible trip as well. Uh, oh, they're all going to be amazing. That trip is on a is on a yacht that holds two hundred and thirty eight people. Every every cabin, there's no there's no inward cabins. In other words, every cabin has a balcony, and wow. every cabin comes with a butler. Ah, oh my God! So, I wouldn't want to go home. And it's not. Oh, no, it's not all right, guys, I have to fly. All right. Chat, so, chat. It's been such a buzz. Until we meet again. All right. Love Bye. you, Lena. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Bye. And go, Kamala Walsh. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye -bye. Yeah. We will have to have.